My name is Chris Park, and I'm the designer and programmer of AI War. This is an informal look at the latest of my weekly co-op campaigns with my core testing group. To be perfectly honest, this particular campaign is going pretty poorly. We're facing off against a pair of level 7 AIs, but this galaxy map has been brutal. We're at just under the 7 hour mark for this game, with sessions spread out over a 2 week period. There were 3 of us at first, red, that's me, yellow, and blue. And then at around the 4 hour mark we added green as a 4th player. The game is very flexible with how players are managed during a campaign as of last month's update. More on those features in a bit. The first hour of this game was unremarkable, although from scouting this was looking like a really easy map. Low level scouts revealed that no less than 3 of the 5 advanced research stations, or ARSs, were within 2 hops of our team's home planets. It looked far too easy but appearances can often be deceiving with AI War, so we kept playing. If it was too easy, we'd win quickly and start a new campaign. Within an hour, we'd extended our territory so that we controlled eight planets instead of our original three, and we'd already captured two of the ARSs. Our economy was weak because the captured planets were pretty poor in metal and crystal, and we were unable to adequately secure our home planets because of exogalaxy wormholes belonging to the AIs, but things were still looking up. Around the two-hour mark, myself and Yellow were looking to carve a path to the third ARS, but we got stopped cold by a superfortress in the way. As the creator of the game, I judged that we had enough forces to take them out. We had around 3,000 ships between us in the adjacent system, and you'd think I'd know, but the combination of ships on the superfortress's planet just wiped the floor with us, and our 3,000 ships disappeared in a matter of minutes. I went back for another go with the reserve fleet with similar results. Thus we decided to take a step back and go around the southwest path, a far longer road, but also a much safer one. Our economy was still hurting, and those planets in the southwest were fairly isolated, so we decided to take them to add to our income. Normally the smartest strategy would be to just hop over them and do a deep strike against the AI, but because of our exposed position elsewhere, we thought it would be nice to have some protected resource-bearing planets. Too many of our harvesters and even a few command stations were getting picked off by AI raids. Around the three hour mark, an unusually brutal wave crashed through Yellow's outlying planets and made it all the way through to destroy his home planet before we had fully realized what was happening. We were partly occupied with another simultaneous attack that was costing Blue a couple of key planets in the south. That was the first major blow against us, and that caused the AI progress to shoot up as well as seriously harming Yellow's already poor economy. But he rebuilt and we moved on. Blue and I made good progress in the west, and I captured an advanced factory so that I could build Mark IV ships. Shortly after, we captured the third ARS, unlocking yet another ship class. Surely this would be enough to put us back on great footing. We controlled a hefty 14 planets by that point, and our collective economy was strong enough to support fairly extensive fleets, as well as enough defenses to withstand the persistent, strong waves of AI ships. At that point, it was past 1 a.m. on our second day, so it was time to break for the week. The following week, our fourth regular player returned from his business trip, and so he joined the game as green. Adding or removing players to a game is quite easy. The host clicks the Manage Players button on the in-game menu, and sets players to be active or disabled. Once a new player has been added to the game, however, they still don't have any ships or any territory, so there is literally nothing they can do. The other players must donate whatever ships and territory they choose to give to the new player. We gave Green four planets, including some that were secluded heavy resources planets that would let him quickly grow. His first order of business was to build a bunch of science labs to catch up on all the knowledge that was available, and his second order of business was to unlock Mark II command stations to jumpstart his economy. Adding a fourth player meant that the AI started sending eight waves at a time against us instead of six. The game automatically scales in difficulty with the number of players present, and that also meant that the AIs were reinforcing their own planets more heavily. I continued to expand in the northwest, and Blue and Green joined in. Green was also busy with getting his civilization caught up, of course, and Blue was helping out Yellow on some particularly embattled planets. My attention was also periodically on some embattled planets of my own, for that matter. Our economy was becoming increasingly strained trying to cover so many fronts at once, especially because we kept losing resource-heavy planets and having to rebuild them. It was then that the AI made its second major move. A vicious raid from the exogalaxy wormhole on Blue's home planet wiped out another home command station. 
Blue had a weak force field in place, as well as several hundred defenders and a few dozen turrets, but recent waves had worn down the tractor beams around the wormhole. The AI struck hard and fast, skipping past the defenders and taking down the force field and the command station in one go. The AI progress jumped upwards again, and Blue's economy took a dive. To make matters worse, the AI swept through a number of other planets belonging to Yellow and myself, bringing us down as well. Once again, it was past 1 a.m. and time to stop for the night. We had done a solid job of integrating green in that session, and had managed to take four or five more planets to aid the collective economy. But the loss of Blue's home station was pretty devastating. It was all down to my home station then. If that was lost, the game was over. The following night, Green couldn't make the game, so we simply disabled him through the same interface as before and kept playing. We left all his ships to him, although we could have divided them amongst ourselves and then given him new rations upon his return the following week. But by leaving his player account disabled but with control of those ships, any one of us could control his ships as well as our own, and his space docks continued to produce ships that were useful to the team. In Green's absence, we had mixed success. Our northwest territory was well protected, and I used my and green ships to secure a new planet for blue, as well as to knock out a data center of the AI, reducing the AI progress by at least a little. Unfortunately, the southeast was just a mess. Yellow was attacking the planet Sucknu with little success, despite an impressive force of starships, and the AI waves were becoming ever more fierce. Blue was beaten back to the point of controlling almost no planets, and Yellow and myself also took heavy losses. At one point, the AI very nearly ended the game. My home planet had two weak force fields up over my home station, as well as more than a hundred turrets and a lot of defenders. Spider turrets and tractor beams were holding most ships at bay. Unfortunately, during one wave, a simultaneous raid on another planet took out one of my Mark III energy reactors, which sent my energy negative and caused my force fields and tractor beams to shut off at the worst possible time. The AI forces swarmed to my home station, and if there had been more of them, that would have ended the game. As it was, they got it down to 60% health before I stopped them. I repaired it, and Blue gave me a replacement reactor to get my energy back in the positive. I put my ships into a holding pattern in the northwest, and diverted new ship production to the southeast. Blue withdrew his forces from the northwest to do the same. We rebuilt all the planets we'd lost, and the three of us banded together to take out Sucknu, where many of the most devastating raids had been coming from. Even with all three of us, it was a bloody engagement, but we managed to take the planet. 1 a.m. rolled around once again, and we stopped for the week, having only secured a pair of new planets that night, but having at least gotten back onto a better footing with the rest of our territory. Some AI War players who only play the game solo ask me what the difference is in co-op. My response is that, in terms of game mechanics, not much. The difficulty of the AI scales up automatically, as do the number of AI waves, as I've already mentioned, but that's about it. However, that said, the subjective experience of co-op versus solo could not be more different. The very nature of co-op gaming makes for a transformative experience, as this mid-game tour hopefully illustrates. This is the end of the tour, but not the end of the game for my playgroup. Next week, Green will be back and all four of us will try to get that fourth ARS and start moving towards the AI home planets. We also need some more advanced factories, since right now I'm the only one who can build the highest tier of ships. Unfortunately, the extensive travels of my Mark IV scout have revealed a pretty grim picture. The advanced factories are all pretty far off, and the AI home planets each seem to be in different, very distant corners of the galaxy. There appears to be nine or ten hops to each of them, which is going to require some extremely long-range rating that is going to be hard to sustain even with all four of us, given the high AI progress at this stage. And taking out one of the AIs, if we are able to do so, is only going to cause the AI progress to skyrocket even more, so we may have to try to coordinate attacks on both AI home planets at once, if we can manage it. Our hold on our existing territory is marginally tenuous, and our economy is okay but not stellar. Our fleets are decimated after our attacks on Sucknu and the AI's attacks all over our perimeter. This campaign is the favorite kind for my playgroup. <laughs> Bleak. Next week, the AI might well snuff us out completely, but we're going to have one heck of a fun time trying to beat the odds.